Masters and Fellows. Hello and welcome to another edition of Masters and Fellows. I'm Gilbert Fellows. And I'm Norman Masters. On tonight's show... Sylvester Stallone returns to Vietnam in Rambo, First Blood Part 2. Chuck Norris takes on the local mafia in Code of Silence. And Roger Moore tries to stay steady on his feet in A View to a Kill. First up, Sylvester Stallone returns as John Rambo in Rambo, First Blood Part 2. Rambo is released from prison by the government for a top-secret covert mission to the last place on Earth he'd want to return to. Norwich. It's actually the jungles of Vietnam, Gil. No difference, Norm. This is a hell of an action-packed war film, Gil. It has everything a dumb fool would want in an action movie. I really like Sly's hair in this one, Norm. Now, I'm no Vidal Sassoon, but I know good hairstyle when I see one. And he maintains it so well throughout the movie in some treacherous conditions. One thumb up just for the hair. Here's the trailer. (laughs) Joined Army, 6th of June, 69. Accepted, Special Forces. Helicopter and language qualified. Expert in light weapons and guerrilla warfare. Sylvester Stallone is back as Rambo. (laughs) Rambo is the best combat vet I've ever seen. His mission, to locate American POWs in Vietnam. Think you'll find someone? POWs? Down. Bullet! Bullet! His orders, not to engage the enemy. He's got 36 hours to complete the mission or reach the extraction point. We're going down! You ain't going anywhere. I'm telling you, abort! double-crossed, and left behind enemy lines. You're the one who's making the mistake. Yeah? What mistake? Rambo. <laughs> and now, he's getting out any way he can. Rambo. What most people call hell, he calls home. No man, no war, no war can stop him. Sylvester Stallone is back as Rambo. First Blood, Part 2. Adrian! Rocky! (laughs) What did you make of this one, Norm? Well, I'm a sucker for all-out jungle action, as you well know, Gil. A few trees, a large knife, and I'm hooked. This one delivers the goods on both those levels. It also has a good message about the power of guns. Yes, it did. Guns kill people, Gil. It's an important message. It also drums home the idea that bandanas do help sweat from entering the eyes. The two are very much linked. Indeed they are. Next, Chuck Norris is Eddie Cusack. A Chicago cop caught in the middle of a gang war while his own force shun him because he wants to take an irresponsible cop down. Everyone gives him the Code of Silence. Which is probably why they named the movie Code of Silence. Here's the trailer. Code of Silence. Chuck Norris lays down the law as the toughest cop in Chicago in his most dramatic film yet. Eddie Cusack is a good cop, having a bad day. Brothers, I promise you, blood, blah, blah, with a murder to soul. I want this guy Cusack. I want to know what he is, what he's doing, where he lives. I want him. This is 1462. I need backup. Hey, you don't want to be in here. If I want your opinion, I'll be there. A mob war to stop. Take him apart. Hey, where's Kuzak? He's saving the world. An innocent girl to protect. Angel, give it up. Shit. He took off the whole truck of armor. He's a one man army now. Chuck Norris, cold of silence. The toughest cop in the world just got tougher. Kuzak! Chuck Norris. Code of silence. Do you think Chuck would have been better without the beard, Norm? Well, the beard was contracted for the picture before Chuck was, Gil. I think this is by far Norris's greatest acting achievement. He went from being a wooden actor to a nicely varnished wooden actor in a single stroke. Personally, I think he could have done with two coats. Especially under those blowy Chicago conditions. Totally agree, Norm. There's a scene where he dives into a river which sort of dowers his performance in the second half of the picture. Maybe three coats would have done it. We do have to give a mention to the wonderful robot in the picture, though, Gil. 
Yes, I thought Henry Silver was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Next up is Roger Moore's seventh outing as British super spy James Bond in A View to a Kill. 007 investigates a horse racing scam which leads to a mad industrious planning to create a worldwide microchip monopoly by destroying California's Silicon Valley. Here's the trailer. <laughs> This man has a secret ambition. I propose the uh, end of, uh, you know, domination of Silicon Valley. Project Main Strike. A secret plan. For which each of you will pay me 100 million, you know, dollars. And a secret weapon. Well, we're not sure about her. Named Mayday. Someone will take care of you. Oh. You'll see to that person, will you? There's only one man who can stop them. Follow that parachute. No speak English. Out. The name's Bob. James Bob. And I'm Dick Tracy, and you're still under arrest. In the world of high adventure, the highest number is still 007. Roger Moore is James Bond 007 with Tanya Roberts, Grace Jones, wow. and Christopher Walken. Uh -huh. Has James Bond finally met his match? Find out this summer in A View to a Kill. Title song performed by Joanne Duran. Oh, the stench. Yep. It certainly is a smelly Bond movie norm. I believe Roger Moore was 103 when he made this. Maybe older. I think Christopher Walken missed a trick with this movie, Gil. I think he should have tried to destroy the negative of the film, instead of Silicon Valley. That would have been a lovely plot twist. Tanya Roberts could have died in the carnage, too. Terribly directed by John Glenn. Yes, but at least he had his NASA work to fall back on. Exactly. How many Bond directors have orbited the Earth? The whole film should have been shunted out into space. Totally agree, Gil. And that song sends shivers down my spine. Maybe Simon Le Bon could have flown the ship into orbit. Probably would have sunk it. <laughs> <laughs> Next week, it's June 1989. And you look at Robin Williams in Dead Poets Society. Michael Keaton as Batman. The kid from Karate Kid in Karate Kid Part 3. See you next week. Masters and Fellows.